Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Sir, Honor, I, I stand before you today. Uh, sorry. Somewhat confused. And now, and now, here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. And look, the Los Angeles Times is shrinking to pamphlet size, essentially. And the New York Times, well, we've talked about the New York Times on the air for years. They look down on things like what we do. On the front page, it has always said that they have all the news that's fit to print, and they'll decide what that is. Yeah, you got the radio station in L.A. that says they have all you need to know. That's right. Somebody decided what you need to know, and that's all you're getting. (laughs) They made that decision for you. And the L.A. Times, same. I'm sorry, the New York Times, same thing. All the news that's fit to print. Everything else is unfit. Well, it's amazing that what is fit to print these days is uh, a lot more like what we do than it used to be. (laughs) Let me tell you what's fit to print in the uh, in the uh, New York Times that we found here. Dateline, Olympia, Washington. Half a century ago, the conventional wisdom was that having a child was the surest way to build a happy marriage. Women's magazines of that era promised that almost any marital problem could be resolved by embarking on parenthood. An editor at Better Homes and Gardens enthused in 1944, once a child arrives... We don't worry about this couple anymore. There are three in that family now. Perhaps there is not much more needed in a recipe for happiness. Over the past two decades, however, many researchers have concluded that three's a crowd when it comes to marital satisfaction. More than 25 separate studies have established that marital quality drops, often quite steeply. After the transition to parenthood. And forget the empty nest syndrome when the children leave home. Couples report an increase in marital happiness. (laughs) Everyone's worried the kids are going to leave. And then they find, oh my God, we're free. Is that what Larry Miller said when his kids grew up? We're free. Right. So did you hear that, folks? More than 25 separate studies have established that marital quality drops, often quite steeply, after the transition to parenthood. And parents are happy when their kids leave home. Happiness increases when their kids leave home. I'm wondering if uh, you're one of the kinds of people they're talking about here in those 25 separate studies. You know, things were going great. You met the perfect person. You were doing cool stuff. You were having fun. Everything was fantastic. Until your girl said that she got knocked up. And starting with the PMS 28 days a month and the hemorrhoids and the complaining and the bitching and the moaning... Right up on through the crying and the arguing over who's going to get up in the middle of the night and feed the little brat. Continuing on through the terrible twos. The kid says no to everything and refuses to do anything you say. Continuing through that first day of school when you have to be constantly worried that the kid is going to get raped on the way to work and with school. To uh, the uh, teenage years when your kids are uh, smoking dope and uh, banging around uh, beginning at age 11 these days. Are you one of those people who had a perfect life? It was just fabulous. And suddenly it went in the tank? I know somebody who shall remain nameless who told me that she had parents. They met while he was in the military, and she had parents who were just having a fantastic life. Before any kids were born, and by the way, the parents never failed to remind them of this, before the kids were born, he was in the military and was pretty free uh, to uh, travel. And they went to Paris and they went to Germany and they just traveled all over the place. Young couple there, 
banging away, having a good time. Five years of that. They never even thought about whether they would ever have kids or not. They were just having a good time. And then the pregnancy kicked in and everything fell off a cliff. Now, I know the politically correct thing to say is that you love your kids and you would never give them up. and The kids are a joy. And I know that's the politically correct thing to say. But come on, this is not a politically correct program. Because truth be told, no matter how wonderful you think your kids are as human beings, you forget all the fun you were having. I mean, what? You were not enjoying yourself before the kid was born? You were not having a good time? You were not spontaneous? So having a kid didn't make it any worse because it wasn't that good to begin with? What? Is that what you're telling me? No, no. It always starts off great. The wedding cake and the the the, the bridal shower and the honeymoon and... You know, go to Ikea. Come on, honey, let's go to Ikea. Come on. And it's a banging five times a day and everybody paying attention to you and especially to Mrs. You, who's getting all the attention for being such a beautiful bride. Blah, 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 blah. And then getting pregnant and having that kid it falls off a cliff. At least that's what I get. I'm going to the New York Times for this. 25 separate studies show that this is the case. Are you one of the people that we would find in those 25 separate studies? Are you one of the people who had a great time, a great relationship, but suddenly turned south when that chick you're with got knocked up? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Did he get married so he could pay her bills? Absolutely not. Oh, yeah, your favorite afternoon radio program. Not me that said it. Look at the numbers. It's the Tom Likas Show. Ask for it by name. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. The New York Times references more than 25 separate studies. But according to the New York Times, have established that marital quality drops often quite steeply. After the transition to parenthood, are you one of those people? It's Karen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yes, we are one of those people. Um, my husband and me were high school sweethearts. We were together um, about 10, 11 years on and off. Never, We didn't want to get married. We just wanted to live together in sin. Um, I was told by various doctors that I was not going to be able to have children. Um, so, you know, we proceeded. Um, we decided to live together, and my parents didn't allow, I mean, were not okay with us living in sin, so we decided to get married, and about four months before the wedding, I became pregnant, and everything was okay, we decided to keep the child, and um, if I had to do it all over again, I, I love my children, don't get me wrong, but I would not have children again. Really? Yes. What happened? Well, I mean, it's just, I... I'm not a patient person, I am not, and I knew from, I mean, you could ask speak to my mother and from the age that I could probably talk I always said I did not want children I always said no children for me and that was probably one of the reasons my husband and me at the time um, when we were younger didn't work out because he always wanted children I didn't and um, when I actually actually came out pregnant you know he was like very happy with it and I figured okay well let me keep him happy and you know we'll do it um, now it's like, you know, we're struggling with this economy, and um, I just, I, I don't have the patience. You know, I could tell you in the last two weeks how many times we've had sex. And it's like, for me, sex is like a big part of the relationship. Let me ask you a question. He's not here, so you can answer honestly. Listen. Oh, he's driving with me. He's driving, but I can answer honestly. He, can't hear, what, he can't hear what I'm about to say. Now, look, if he wanted to have kids and you didn't, uh -huh. why do you have to marry him? Why could you just, like, date him? No, I, I, no, I did. I mean, I, at the time, I didn't, um, I married him because I loved him. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I think it was more of a pressure between my mom and me. 
um, and it was that I got suckered in by my mother to marry him. Um, we were both, him and I were both very comfortable living together without having to get married. And my mom is one of those very traditional Latino women who do not live, you, you know, I'm their only daughter, so I don't live in sin. You know, how could she tell the family that I'm living with a man and not being married to them? So we figured we were together for almost, what, 12 years when we got married? So we were like, might as well just get married. And not until after we were engaged is that I, you know, I came out pregnant. <laughs> so uh, you were uh, not using birth control, or you were, or what? No, I wasn't. I wasn't because at... I went for 11 when I was probably, let me see, 18, because I had um, looked into um, getting my tube size very young. And then I um, went to different specialists, and I was told I wasn't going to be able to have um, children, or if I did end up having children, I would have to go through fertility specialists and various different things that I would have to do to get pregnant. So I just took that as a whole and said, oh, well, I can't get pregnant. We had been you know, intimate for 10 years without not one scare, not one, um, you know, not false, no false alarm, no nothing. So when I came out pregnant, I actually, because at the, I have um, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, so they had me on birth control to actually minimize the sizes of the cysts uh, um, that I have on my ovaries. So I actually was on birth control, not religiously when I got pregnant, but Lo and behold, I got pregnant when I was told I couldn't and on birth control. So I'm like, don't trust your doctor sometimes. Unbelievable. Well, yeah. <laughs> I you see, the thing is, I I know too many people who have been in that exact same position. They were told they could never have kids, and then they did. Yeah, exactly. It's like, damn. And then life is wrong. over. It's over. Now you have to live your life through your kids. Now you have to hope your kids have a better life than you, the rotten life you have, having to take care of them. Exactly. I can't wait to the day they move out, though. I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, and I love my children, and I would probably kill for them. Let me ask you a question. Though. Did you know when you had the first one that you felt this way? Yes. Why'd you have a second one? Because, again, I got talked into the second one. Let me tell you, we, my husband and I decided, we had both decided that we didn't want them, that we didn't want to keep her. We were going to have an abortion. We had the plans. Everything was done. And my husband slipped up and told his sister, and there came the lectures, and no one would let us forget it. So we got talked into having another child. And guess what? These people that said they were going to be there for us when we needed the help, they're nowhere to be found. Unbelievable. Karen, thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Garrett on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Garrett. Well, uh, I'm a big Likas fan. I've been listening to you for about 12 years. I'm uh, 28 years old. I had a high school sweetheart, and I knew your rules, and uh, I thought I knew better, man. You know? Um, I ended up... Uh, she went on birth control, and we were using condoms first, and then uh, and then she went on the pill, and then I, I I stopped using the condoms, and I I liked the feeling, so I just uh, I just when she got off of the pill, I kept I kept not using condoms, and the thing is, man, we were partying, you know, we were having good times, you know, I was I was banging her, her friends, you know. Uh, uh, taking drugs, doing drugs, having a good time, you know. I grew up right here in Orange County, uh, Silver Spoon, you know. Uh, both my parents worked. Um, bottom line, I ended up uh, getting her pregnant, okay? and uh, Why'd you do that? Man, she's fertile myrtle, you know. So you were I, using a condom, but she got pregnant anyway? Yeah, yeah. You know what? Um, there was suspicion that maybe she... Uh, poked a hole in it you know um wait wait you I, stayed with someone that you thought poked a hole in a condom man i sure did i even proposed marriage and got married oh, and uh oh you're killing me <laughs> oh man it gets worse so uh so <laughs> bottom line we get married we have the honeymoon honeymoon period or whatever i'm nervous the honeymoon period uh and and uh, everything's great, you know, and then all of a sudden everything's got to change. My lifestyle's got to change. My friends got to change, you know. Uh, uh, the things I'm doing aren't appropriate anymore for a father to do, you know. Uh, no more uh, smoking weed with the boys, you know. Uh, uh, 
time to get a 40 hour a week gig you know and uh pay for the pampers and uh the uh, uh formula uh, god knows what i mean it's just unreal um i heard you say the other day it was something like 200 250 thousand dollars to raise a kid you know until that's he's what 18. it is yeah you know and uh I, I tell you what tom you know i love this girl with all my heart man and uh it, it the changing I, I don't think i need to change you know what i mean let she me ask me you another question it says here you have three kids yeah, I do. Now I'm you, 28 you, years old. She put the pin in the condom, all right, and you married her. Why'd you have two more? Okay, uh, uh, well, I married her, and, you know, you're having it, you're intimate with your wife. That and, doesn't mean uh, you have to keep having kids. You could just have one kid. Yeah, and, and, and the, the funny thing is um, I have a three-year-old, a four-year-old, and a, a five-year-old, and we've been married for uh So she was pregnant years. for 27 out of 36 months. Yes, sir. Why would you <laughs> want to live like that? Oh, it was gnarly. Why would you want to live? Why would you cooperate with someone who I, wants I to do that? Like, I felt like I was trying to prove something to my old man. My old oh, man, you Jesus. know, he's been married for 43 years. Oh. I felt like, you know, if I, if, if, if I, uh, if I, if, if one I day you'll find out how miserable, one day man, you're going to find out how miserable he is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm finding it out, man. I'm finding it out. You know, but, but I love my kids. I love my kids. Um, I think it was probably the most vain thing I ever did was having children. Uh, I, I, I want them to uh, succeed. I want to provide the best for them. But, but the thing is, I regret it at the same time. It's weird because I regret having them because I don't get to have that lifestyle anymore. You don't have a life anymore, for Christ's sake. Alex on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Alex. Long time listener, first time caller. Long time listener, first time caller. So, Tom. Yes. I got a good one for you. I've uh, been with my ex fiance for the last five years. A week after New Year's, she tells me from Miami, she makes a phone call from Miami because she's a model. She works out of Miami a lot. Calls me one night. Well, that's br that is brilliant to uh, have a serious relationship with a model who works in Miami and is there a lot. With a child. With a three-year-old child. Why did you do that? We both wanted it. Why did you want it? Because at the time, it, was, it just seemed like it was right. What does and that mean? I have no idea. That's why I'm calling you. So, oh, I can't tell you why you thought that was right. It was wrong. <laughs> so, I mean, if you want to, if you want to bang a hot model who goes to Miami a lot, bang her. But what do you think she's doing in Miami when you're not around? Well, the the, the funny thing is, is before, before she was a big kind of B class model that I call it, she was nothing. I've kind of forced the issue of her being what she wanted to do and get into it and follow it. So you pushed her to be like, come on, it's your yeah. dream to be a model, come on. Go to Miami, spend all the time you have to, come on. So, and she gets to Miami and everybody with a business card that says photographer on it, she's taking all the yeah. uh, business cards and then going out, well, why don't we have a drink and talk about it? And she's doing it. GWC, they're called, guys with cameras. There we so. go. Mm -hmm. And uh, you didn't know about that before you started pushing her into this? Oh, no, I'm a very secure guy. Like, it doesn't bother me. Well, what a fool you are. Yeah, thanks. Um, the thing is, is she called me one night and said, hey, you know what? I need to do this for myself. I can't be with you no more. <laughs> I have to concentrate on what I'm doing. I was like, okay, so what's yeah. that mean? You know, we, we're supposed to be told that we set a, a date to get married, a guest list. We went to go see the place we're getting married well, at. Well, the question what I'm doing, I'm very busy here. I, <laughs> I, I got a lot of things I got to do here in Miami, and I, I can't, I just can't be with you anymore because I'm busy. And if I'm yeah. busy, how can I be with you? I thought you'd get a kick out of I'm it. I'm in a drive in interview. I'm in a drive in interview right now. There's a, I wrote my portfolio in. I'm having a drink with a guy, and he wanted to take a 
Well, to take a look at my portfolio. He's looking at it right now. <laughs> so it gets better. Oh, how much everybody. better can it get? So she's gone for like 10 days after she called to make sure that Sure she call. was. Comes home, packs her stuff, puts the baby stuff in the box, grabs all her stuff, and then leaves. Goes to her mom's house for about a week with a baby. The baby comes back to me, and then she gets on a plane and goes to Miami, and she's been in Miami now for about a month. And the question that everybody brings up is, like, it worked before. How doesn't it work now? Well, and why are now, you... now she's on a photo shoot. Uh, she's with her daughter, and it's a photo shoot. They were taking pictures. Right, he's got the aperture wide open, and he's taking photographs so of me as we speak. <laughs> right? Right. So I've been stuck with the house. I'm going to walk away from my house. I've been packing. I've been watching my child, trying to find daycare, taking care of everything. And she's out there calling me saying, oh, I just went paddle boarding today, and I'm having a great time. I was like, perfect, really? wonderful. I'm glad you're living the life, and I'm stuck with everything. What is she, what is she dating, Dick Cheney? Oh, that's waterboarding. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, uh, boy, it's really rough. She really misses her kid. She's out there waterboarding while, while you're at 3 in the morning getting up and feeding the kid. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it, nobody understands how, how a mother could walk away from a child. And Well, you know, when you got a career, and you're a two-career household, and you have a long-distance relationship, you know, or you, you got things you got to do. I mean, you got uh, all cut, you got a schedule to keep. You know what I'm saying? I've got one photographer after another. And I, I, I've got an agent I'm talking to and a possible manager. And I, I, I'm busy all day long. I'm here right now. I'm here at, uh, I'm here at the, the River Park Hotel, downtown Miami, I'm, uh, showing my portfolio to a potential agent. Now, you got to understand, i got a career. You were the one who told me that I should go ahead and pursue my dream. And that's what I'm doing. Funny thing is, is yeah, she's supposed to be busy. Her agency has promised her all this work, and it's been a month, and she hasn't worked once. I'm shocked. <laughs> I am shocked. Hang on a second, Alex. Uh, Steve, what do you want to say to Alex? Yeah, he, Tom, I can't believe that he, he's such a fool. How could he even think that uh, he should let her go to Miami? And this is one of the funniest things you ever did with that, uh, that little routine we were just doing there. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. How, how, how could you not see it coming? Uh, I don't know. You look. You, you say you're secure. You're very secure. But you, you know, you, you gotta you gotta not be so foolish. This girl is obviously, you know, running at your expense. She's she's down there. She's you, you gotta know she's banging everybody, and she's got you up here on the hook. Not anymore. Maybe she did, but not anymore, so. Well, it doesn't sound you sure, like, like I'll you tell you what. It. You sure taught her a lesson. I'll tell you what. Tom Likes. 1-800-5800-TOM. The Tom Likes Show. Tom Likes Show. Number one of the afternoon, number one. What can I say? Thank you for being there. We love it. And we're talking about the people that the New York Times says 25 different studies confirm marital quality drops off it quite steeply after the transition to parenthood. Is that you? Jesse on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Uh, I'm not talking about talking about the topic, man, but that routine you just did was great, man. I almost had to pull over. I was laughing so hard in my car. <laughs> that was genius. Thank you so much. And I want to say, Tom, you are the man, man. You just you make my day every day on the way home. Jesse, thank you for that. I appreciate the call, Jessica, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. Well, I just called to basically, I love your show, and you're so right. I'm a 24-year-old. I have four children. And four children? Dumb. 
Huh? Four children? Why? I got four. Because why? Why should I pay my rent? Why should I? You know, I'm going to have children eventually, so why not hook these dumb little boys up and have them pay for it for the rest of my life? You know, my child, my, my children, they go to preschool, and basically I'm taken care of. I now, just, now, you know, do you, did you get knocked up by guys who make money or by losers? Of course. Big dudes. Big money. Big cars, baby. Really? Yes. So basically, you know what I'm saying? You, what you're saying is so right. You know, a female my age, you know, being taken care of right now. And, you know, I, plus on top of that, I get food stamps. I get money from the government. And all these men are helping me out. I drive a brand new car. I'm insured. And, you know, I'm just, it's financial difficulties for who? Not for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so how just, much you know, do you get total for four kids? How much do you get in child support every month? Well, let me let me put it this way. My children, they're not missing anything. They have the best clothes. They go to the best private, okay? I'm talking private preschools and schools. But for me, basically, I get a quarter pound of what I want every week. I go shopping. I dine out. I eat out. And plus, I have savings and bonds from, you know, a little money I make on the side, making my little jewelry, doing my hobby. But basically, bottom line, when it comes down to it, that is an investment. And all these guys, let me understand, all these guys, none of them ever say anything like, hey, let's use a condom or anything like that. Yes, they did. But just like your previous caller, I'm a model, baby. <laughs> I'm a model. So So you, know, you say things like, come on, honey, I want to feel you. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oldest trick of the book. Yep. You know it. You know it. Look at you. So, Tom, could you please take me out Kobe style? Yes, yes, I can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, there I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 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 You only wonder if one of her kids is named Roberto oh. Alomar Jr. Oh. Then the oh. world would turn. Bitch. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. <laughs> that would serve some people right, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, right? Come on. Don't use a condom, honey. <laughs> Linda on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I love your show. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have a story about um, my... First, my first pregnancy was great. I had a, a son, and he he's a, a bright boy, and I was I had my hands full. Everything was, you know, I was doing great. I thought I was a great mother. My husband wanted to have another child right away within, like, the first two years, and I didn't want to, and I let him talk me into it, and that was just the worst thing I ever did. And I ended up having a really bad... Um, postpartum depression so bad that I ended up suicidal and um, that lasted for years I mean I, I wasn't suicidal for years but it, I mean I was in the hospital there for a while in a psych unit <laughs> and um, you know family had to come in and take care of the kids and they went out of state for a while to stay with family I mean it was just it was just horrible and um, it took me years, and honestly, I don't know if I ever really recovered from it because, um, you know, eventually I discovered that I was bipolar, and, I mean, it just seemed like it just went from bad to worse, and I didn't think that there was anything wrong with me before that. Wow, and... those children are a joy. I'll tell you what. Jessica on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello. Hi. I have to first say I love your show. Thank you. Um, I have been with my husband since I was 17. I'm 28 now. And so we had a good, strong uh, marriage. We've been married for about six years. A couple of years ago, we decided to have a child. And ever since then, it's just gone downhill. So I absolutely agree with you. I think marital quality goes down. I think there's just not enough time left for, um, each other anymore. You don't devote as much attention. So why would any guy want to get married? You know what? I 
after being with my husband now for 11 years, I love him dearly as a best friend, but I don't even know why anyone would want to get married. Even so, to him? Even to the guy you thought was wonderful before? Yeah. I mean, it really is like, I hate to say it, but like a brother or something like that. Oh. We, we make a really good team, but God. it's just not, you know, what you think uh, a marriage is going to be. Is there any sex? Um, I, you know what? There is. I Yes, I and it, on the following it. dates, <laughs> February 14th. December 24th. Right. No, seriously. December well, 31st and whatever day your birthday is. Honestly, I do try a couple times a week, but it's just, it's not. Not it's that not good. It's not even good for me. I mean, it's just not there. Probably anymore. not even good for him. No, of course it's not. You thought there was no bad pizza. Right. <laughs> right. This I mean, is it's bad good. pizza. Right. Right. Yep. So, you know, can you take me out? Blow me up, Tom. Can I take you out how? Can you blow me up? Of course I can. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Crystal on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing today? Great. I just wanted to call and make a comment about the model that called in saying that she uses guys to basically have kids and... Um, she's been doing that for a while, and she thinks nothing of it. Um, I think it's a disgrace that she does that. First of all, those kids are going to be um, doing the same kind of actions in, in their life, and we're just creating more more gold diggers out there. And she has no sort of backbone, and she's just a shame to old women. Of course, what does she care? Everything's paid for forever. Exactly, and, and yeah, it's benefiting herself, but... Really, is that the kind of mother that you want raising your children? And and I'm pretty open-minded. You know, people deserve to have their stories heard, but her kids are just going to be in the welfare system. We're paying for her food stamps. What do I, I? Why do I work hard? Why do I put myself through college? Why am I a teacher just to pay for her way and so her kids could be, go to private school? Well, uh, again, because she's got everything she wants, I don't think she really cares what you think or anybody thinks. I definitely don't think so. All right, uh, Crystal, thank you for that call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. The New York Times claims that 25 separate studies, actually more than 25, have established that marital quality drops, I'm quoting them now, often quite steeply. After the transition to parenthood. Are you one of those people? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. A Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Here we are in Hollywood. And we are here uh, just adjacent to the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. So in case you ever want to put some flowers on Marilyn Monroe's grave on the way home, we are conveniently located. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. The New York Times says there are 25 different studies at least... That established that marital quality drops often quite steeply after the transition to parenthood. Are you uh, one of those people? It's Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? I'm doing okay. You can probably tell by my accent I'm from, you guessed it, Los Angeles. Thank you for that. <laughs> Welcome. Hey, uh, yeah, I went through this, man. I uh, was dating a girl that I've known for years since high school. We never dated in high school, but... A few years after high school, we started going out, and we ended up getting married, and a couple of trips to Hawaii, random trips to Vegas, just on the fly. We'd go to San Diego, we'd go to San Francisco, and we'd just have sex all over the apartment, and things were great, and then she decided that, uh, I guess we are having too much fun, and decided we needed to have a child. So, we had a child, and it seemed like from that point on, everything fell apart. I've never understood that attitude. You know, we are having just a little too much fun. Exactly. 
doing whatever we want, whenever we want. There's something wrong with this. We need to F it up. Exactly. And that's exactly what happened. We had decided before we got married, or after we got married, when we decided to have kids, we were going to say no less than two, no more than three. Well, we had one, and I had a vasectomy before the daughter was a year old. (laughs) Um, And you know what they say, you know, the the one thing I don't know if they touched on in this study was not just does the quality of the marriage, but the quality of the sex also goes down. Of course it does. Not just the frequency, but... Maybe it was just uh, my now ex-wife's uh, condition, but uh, you've heard the expression, throwing a hot dog down a hallway. <laughs> uh, you know, try, and, try to get with a woman that's just passed a watermelon, and, you know, it's just not fun anymore. Uh, I think I got a new... I think I got a new way to... Do, do you think? Oh. <laughs> Um, wow, well, that reminds me of the old joke. <laughs> yeah, there's another one. No, no, I got, I got, no, don't take, don't, I'm going to take this as far as I can take it. This is as far, that's it, I'm drawing the line, this is it. So I think two people had sex, and after sex was over, the guy looking pretty self-satisfied looks over and says, how was it? And she says, horrible. And he says, why? And she says, I had no idea you had such a small organ. And he said, well, I didn't know I was going to have to play in a cathedral. <laughs> oh God! For that, that's great. Oh. Hey, can you uh, can you take me out, Miss Landmine style? Oh, do we still have Miss Angola Landmine? Uh, do we still have that somewhere? Oh, if you don't, if you don't have it, all you got to do is play the African tribal and cut it off. <laughs> and your, your normal cut it off at the knee. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Miss African Landmine. Miss Angola Landmine style. There you go. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number on the Tom Likas Show. Uh, R-A-L on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. You busy? Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Hello. Are you there? No, I left the room. Can I take a message? Oh, my God. I love you, but I can't st- I hate you at the same time. Really? We like all crack right. your, we like crack your you. ass. You're going to hate me even more. I'm, all right. My boyfriend is 68 years old. 68? And I'm 26 years old. All right. How is that, by the way? And my ex-boyfriend, which is here right now with me, my ex-boyfriend is 50. No, now he's 60. Sorry. So what, what do you do? Cruise assisted living facilities? How do you pick up guys? Are you kidding me? I'm asking. Um, I love my older men. Filthy, filthy mouth. Filthy. Probably because there's a 68-year-old in the room. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. (laughs) Of course she's with a 68-year-old because she's fat, Dean. Of course. That's a given. Nora on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom. Hey Good Nora. Talk to you. I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, in response to your topic, um, you know, I was one of those children that grew up in a home like this, and I think the thing that's saddest is that no one gives any consideration to these kids and what they go through. Um, it was awful. There was not a lot of bonding. It was not a good experience, and. I think that's why now I'm 33, I have no kids, um, I'm not married, I travel, I, I act like a big kid now because I really didn't get to enjoy being a kid when I should have. I had two very selfish people that were either at each other's throats, there was just not a lot of peace. And, and I, you know, when I see people have these children, it's, it was an anchor. In my, my situation, it was my mom's anchor to keep my dad there, and then she went off and had her own life, and he paid for her career and her college, and all of the rest of us just got kind of left there. And she's never, ever, ever taken any responsibility for any of this. I mean, my dad now, we have a good dialogue. He's learned to, you know, deal with his demons and all of that. But they were both really young when they got married and should have never gotten married at that age in the first place. And I think he was getting ready to leave when she, with my, you know, adult, you know, vision and the way I can look at things in the world as an adult now, I realized that I think a lot of the reason why she even had us was to anchor him there. It wasn't for any other reason. And 
it, you know, made us miserable. It was very sad, and I don't think anyone gives any consideration to what these poor kids go through when they live in a home like that. Well, they I, know what's going on. They know what's going on. It's I don't think stupid. most people give any thought to having children. They just think that they're supposed to have them because their parents want them to have them or their grandparents want them to have them or their friends are having them. But I, yeah, I, I really don't think people give thought to uh, the, the quality of life of the kid. They, they, they are concerned about how much attention they themselves are going to get. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I mean, I'd like to have children in a few more years. I mean, a lot. I have a few good friends who are smart enough to wait. And, you know, they're 38, they're 39, but they don't regret it. They think they're better parents now because they've had a chance to learn who they are and have a life. And they're not trying to struggle to grow up and be somebody. And they didn't have these children to try and trap somebody and... You know, it was, it was awful. I just, it makes me really upset when I, I like this last girl that was said basically about 50 times in every single sentence she had with regard to her kids and how she lived off the system. I was, you know, these, these children aren't anything to her, but they're not, she doesn't care about them. She doesn't care what kind of people they're going to turn out to be. She just doesn't care. And it, it's sad that, you know, these studies, I wish that they would go a little bit more in and, you know, point out that these are human beings you're dealing with. They're not just like toys that are pawns in a game. It would be nice to see them point that out. So maybe, I, I mean, I don't know if anyone will stop having kids because they want to manipulate other people and be narcissistic about it, but you'd hope that it would happen. <laughs> Thank you for that, Nora. Appreciate the call. Dave on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 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 How you doing, my friend? How you doing? I'm doing good. Good Good job in the book, by the way. Congratulations. Thank you. So, um been with uh, my wife now for coming up to the 10-year mark this August, actually. Had a daughter uh, three, almost three years ago. The end of March will be her three, three-year birthday. And, you know, things were good throughout the whole relationship. But when they weren't good, we had time to deal with it because we didn't have a daughter. Then we had a daughter and everything changed. Um, she's a great girl. Love her a lot. But uh, my wife started, um, for some reason, being more honest. And I actually got her to admit that throughout the whole time we've been together that her goal was to change me. That's the goal of most women. Most women, absolutely. So, so now I'm in this situation where um, it's just not a real good situation all the way around. Living arrangements, everything. I need to move out. I need to find a place. She's. I take care of my daughter for four days out of the week, and she or three days, and then my wife takes her for the oh, four days. You're killing me. Just the thought of all that running around. Is getting me exhausted. The Tom Likas Show.